Good morning and praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for uh, Sunday service and congratulations upon reaching the final day of uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. I believe that it has been a very refreshing time for you as it has been for us here in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much once again for joining and I also encourage you to reach out uh, to friends and to loved ones and let them know the word of God shall be coming to us shortly in Jesus' mighty name. I uh, thank you for your consistency, for your commitment, and for your patience as we waited for uh, stability for the network in the past days. Uh, we believe that the Lord has kept you strong because we continue to pray for you and to pray for our nation that things will become much and much better in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I also want to remind you that due to our, uh, the fact that we are closing in on our move to a more permanent place, uh, we have decided uh, to wait upon our face-to-face -face gathering uh, so that we can concentrate on what? On, um, concentrate on the move uh, to a new and permanent place that will be unveiling a new phase. And we shall be keeping you posted starting from next week on those developments and keeping, I mean, keeping prayers and let's join our faith together. And I know that a new phase is unfolding for all of us in Jesus' mighty name. I can't wait to see you uh, very soon in a brand new phase in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today we shall be looking at the conclusion of our teaching series on divine speed for this particular uh, month of January. And we shall be looking at divine speed uh, dash the hand of of God. We shall be looking at how the hand of God uh, produces a divine speed. Remember in Isaiah uh, chapter 60 verse 22, the scripture that we read at the beginning says, a little one shall become a thousand and a small one shall become a strong nation. And then it says, I the Lord will hasten it in his time. I will make it, to, uh, I'll make it come to pass quickly in his time. That is the God of speed the God that we serve. We saw supernatural speed or divine speed as speed at the pace of God, speed at the frequency of heaven, speed that uh, you take one step and you receive the result of a thousand steps. You make one investment and you receive the reward or the harvest of uh, an, a big and a wholesome investment. Why? Because of the uh, speed of God, divine speed, the supernatural uh, speed of God activating your move, activating your life, activating everything about you in Jesus' mighty name. Today, as we conclude, we shall be looking at the hand of God as it relates to divine speed. In First Kings chapter 18, uh, verse 46, First Kings verse, uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 46, we see a good example there of divine speed. It says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he guarded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. This is a scripture about the prophet of God called uh, Elijah. Elijah has just had a confrontation with the prophets of Baal. He has just had a confrontation with, uh, with Jezebel. And, and he prayed at that very moment and prayed for rain to come down. He prayed seven times according to the scriptures. And when it was about uh, to come, when the rain was about to pour, he asked uh, Ahab, the king, and says, go ahead, uh, go, because I hear the sound of abundance of rain. And Ahab left Elijah while Elijah was still, what? Was still praying. And Ahab left on chariots. And uh, you can imagine the king's chariots are the fastest in the land. You can imagine a, a, a president's convoy is the fastest in the land. I mean, there's no obstruction. There's, no, there's nothing that can stand in the way of a, of a king's convoy. Uh, so uh, we believe that uh, this is symbolic and this is very powerful for you to note that Elijah was not running against any other chariot. He was running against a chariot of a king. This is a king that has the right of way everywhere he finds himself. But the Bible tells us that a, the, the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He guarded up his loins and he outran the presidential chariot. He outran the king's chariot. He outran 
the, I mean, the convoy of, uh, of King Ahab. That is symbolic of the spirit of God that is produced by the hand of God. When the hand of God comes upon you as a child of God, it causes, I mean, it catapults you from where you are to places, I mean, ahead of people that have gone ahead of you. You may have started slow, you may have started late according to you and according to others. But when the hand of God rests upon you, that hand brings you to the forefront. That hand brings you ahead of those that have gone ahead of you. I don't, I mean, it doesn't matter how late you started, just activate the hand of God today. And this is what we have been doing in these 21 days of prayer and fasting. As we shall see, we have been activating the hand of God. There are many that have gone ahead. There are many that have, I mean, taken steps while you are waiting on God. And they've done maybe quite a number of things. But I want to assure you, by the coming of the hand of God upon you today, you shall be overtaking everything that has gone ahead of you. You shall be fulfilling destiny on schedule. You shall be meeting. I mean, you shall be arriving at the destination you desire much faster that, than anyone could ever think in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You know, many times when we are waiting upon God, it looks like we are delaying. And that is true in the natural. It looks like we are delaying. I remember a time in my life when, I mean, I was just waiting upon God and waiting upon God, not about, I mean, not just two days or three days or two months, no, but a year or two or three and you're just there waiting on God. Everyone seems to be doing everything. Everyone seems to be moving out. I mean, for me, it was about ministry. And I was waiting upon God in the church where I used to serve. I was serving faithfully. I was working in the Bible school. I was working at the church. I was faithful. I never turned to the left or to the right. I did exactly what I was told to do. as available at my post. as available at my place. as available when I was needed. They didn't have to look for me to wonder where, I, where is he? No, I was always in the place where they told me to be. And I, I, I remember there are many guys that looked at me, my agents, and they would feel sorry for me. They look at me and like, oh my God, um, is that? the way you do things, I mean, things are, it's going to take you a long time. This is not how you do things. Step out, do something. I mean, move out, accept some invitations for ministry. Do something, do something. I remember one particular person came and said, here, this is, this is a church. They've invited you. Come, let's go. Let's go and preach. It's a conference. They need you. I said, no, I have, I have to be here for this time. I'm waiting upon the Lord. He was very disappointed that he could uh, give me such, a, we call them doors, open for me such a big door, and I choose to, sit, uh, to stay at my church uh, where I was serving. And there I wasn't even preaching. I was just moving around, being sent all over the place, doing really the ministry of helps. But long story short, when God released me from that place, I can assure you, years have come and gone. And uh, with all humility, sometimes you look for the people that used to tell you, let's go, let's go, or the, the, that were all over the place, never wanting to wait upon God for that hand to come upon them. And you can't locate them. Why? Because, you see, when you wait upon God, when you wait upon the Lord, there's a way God lifts you. And when he lifts you, he gives you not only the time you spent waiting upon him, but he, he gives you so much more than the time you spent. He brings you into destiny much faster, much quicker, without stress. I mean, you can look back and you'll be like, oh, my God. This has come to pass so fast, but then when you look at the time you waited upon God, then you know there's a secret in activating the hand of God upon your life. You, I hope you understand uh, what I'm talking about. One of the things that came out so strongly when we started the year is the element of vision in line with divine speed. We all must have vision for us to be, to be able to walk as speedily towards our destination. We saw that vision aids speed. Vision is the secret for motion. Vision is the fuel for progress. And we saw how important that is. If we look in the Bible, we're going to be seeing some examples, examples of people, of vision, people of, uh, of accomplishments. Each one of us have things that we want to do this year. And that's why we want divine speed to answer to us. The people we're going to be looking at are two individuals. One is Ezra and the other one is Nehemiah. These two individuals had a task. I mean, they had tasks. Ezra had a task to rebuild the temple. Nehemiah had the task to rebuild, I mean, the wall uh, of Jerusalem. And we see they had a target. They had things they wanted to achieve. They looked impossible. These are things that required a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of help from different corners and from different quarters. But 
they received exactly that because of the hand of God that was upon them. And because of the hand of God that was upon these two individuals, they were able to fulfill and achieve destiny on not only on schedule, but much, much faster than anyone could ever have imagined to the extent that people exclaimed and said, this surely is the hand of God. This shall be your portion this year in the name of Jesus. The same way Nehemiah finished his project in time, you shall finish your project in time in Jesus' name. The same way Ezra finished his assignment on record time, you shall be finishing your assignments this year on record time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let look, let's look at Ezra uh, first. That is Ezra chapter 7, uh, verse number 6. Ezra chapter 7, verse number 6. This one, uh, Ezra was given the responsibility, I mean, to rebuild the temple. And then it says, this Ezra came up from Babylon, and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king granted him all his requests according to the hand, I mean, according to the hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. He says, this Ezra came up from Babylon and was, skilled, was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord, his God, that was upon him. In other words, the king granted what Ezra required simply because there was an element of, uh, I mean, of grace called the hand of God that is upon Ezra. Many of us go to request for things uh, from our bosses. We go to request for things from government. We go to request for things from people in authority. And we wonder why we are rejected. We wonder why the things we ask for are not granted. This is the secret. Let the hand of God rest upon you before you go to make your request before your boss, before you go to make your request before those in authority, before you go to present your issues before those from whom you desire justice. Call upon the hand of the Lord to be upon you and begin to see the difference it makes. Ezra says, and the king granted him all his requests, not some of his requests, but all his requests, not because he asked maybe things that were easy, no, because the hand of the Lord his God was upon him. I decree the hand of the Lord your God upon you from this moment forward and throughout this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When you look at Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 17, Nehemiah chapter 2, uh, verse number 17. This is Nehemiah also speaking of himself and also the key, uh, his relationship uh, with the king. Then said I unto them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Verse 18. And I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me. And also the king's words that he had spoken to me, so they said, let us arise and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. Now, we see also Nehemiah. Nehemiah has a vision to rebuild, I mean, the walls of Jerusalem. The work is too much, it is too great, and he needs help from the people, and he needs assistance. And the Bible tells us that he, when he was testifying, of the things that made him qualified to do that work, he said, and I told them of the good hand. His CV, on top of his CV, was there is something on my life called the hand of God, and it has been good upon me. And what did they do? They all said, let us arise and build. Listen, child of God, you can talk with people that are supposed to help you, people you're supposed to lead, people you're supposed to, I mean, to get help from until tomorrow. And then you will realize that they will not come through until the hand of the Lord your God is upon you. Because when the hand of God comes upon you, it causes many things that I'm going to be showing you in a few minutes, how the hand of God assists people. But it's important for you, child of God, to understand that every time you see, I mean, I mean shortness of testimonies, delays, denials, stagnation, all manner of opposition, 
one of the things that you need upon your life is the hand of God to rest upon you. Many people pray a lot of prayers, but they don't know how to pray these kind of prayers. Father, let your hand rest upon my life. Look at Jabez in, uh, in uh, 1 Chronicles uh, chapter 4, uh, verse number 9. Jabez knew, the people in the Old Testament knew these things, and they knew that if I see some kind of issues, things I don't understand in my life, one of the things I'm lacking is the hand of God upon me. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, which means pain, saying, because I bore him in what? In pain. And Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that your hand would be with me, that your hand would be with me. May the hand of the Lord be with you this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the hand of God be with you at your workplace. May the hand of God be with you in your marriage. May the hand of God be with you in your career. May the hand of God be with you in everything that you do this year. May you see the hand of God upon you and may that hand cause, I mean, divine speed to answer to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So when we see Nehemiah, he had an assignment. His assignment was to build a wall around the city, I mean, around Jerusalem. But in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number 15, he shows us that this assignment was finished in a very short time compared to many projects that you can think of. Nehemiah 6 verse 15 tells us, So the wall was finished on the 20th, 25th day of a rule in, the, in 52 days. 52 days. The entire rebuilding of the, of the wall took 52 days. Can you imagine? Even if they told you of a house that was built in 52 days, you may not believe it. But this is a wall, a wall that is supposed to, I mean, to be a fortress for the entire city. And it is finished in 52 days just because the hand of the Lord is upon a certain man. Are you listening, somebody? The other thing we should see, I mean, look at verse 16. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 16 and it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things that they were disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was done by God. This is what the hand of God does. This is what the presence of God does. It makes the people around you to testify that surely this is God. Many of us have had people contend with a God that we serve in many ways. Where is their God? Where is his God? Where is, uh, where is her God? Who, who does she think uh, she is? Yes, she worships God. Let, let us see. I decree this year, before they call upon your God, your God shall show himself strong in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The last time they questioned your God is the last time they will ever question in the name of Jesus. And I also decree that the last time they ask, where is your God, is the last time they will ever ask that question in Jesus' name. Why? Because before they ask, your God shall be speaking speedily and he shall be speaking loudly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So how does the hand of God produce speed? How exactly does the hand of God release speed? How does the hand of God produce speed? And this is how it does it. Number one, the hand of God releases the help of God. It releases the help of God. We all need the help of God in the things we do. We all need the assistance of God in the things we do. If God does not help you, you find that you're short of energy, you're short of progress, you're short of that power that moves you forward. Psalms 119 verse 173 says, Let your hand become my help, for I have chosen your precepts. Let your hand become my help. The hand of God releases the help of God. And when God helps you, let me tell you, no man can stand against you. When God chooses to help a man, when God chooses to help a woman, there's no man that can stand before you and succeed. You see, there are people that every time, uh, the, there are people that are actually have something negative about them, that if you try to assist them, you can actually end up in trouble. But then there are people that are being helped by God himself. It doesn't matter what kind of opposition comes your way. When God chooses to help you, 
There is absolutely no man that can successfully stand against you. I decree the help of God comes upon you this very moment with the hand of God in Jesus' mighty name. Isaiah 41, uh, verse number 10. Isaiah 41, verse number 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, my righteous right hand my righteous right hand. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The hand of God is the custodian of the help of God. The psalmist said, send us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. May you find God's help this year like never before in the name of Jesus. When you're building a house, God will help you in Jesus' name. When you're looking for land, God will help you in the name of Jesus. When you're looking for a wife, when you're looking for a husband, God will help you in the name of Jesus. When you're looking for promotion, God will help you in the name of Jesus. When you're looking for breakthrough of any kind, God will help you this year in the name of Jesus. I decree the help of God through the hand of God comes upon you this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the hand of God releases the power of God. The hand of God releases the power of God. Habakkuk chapter 3 Verse number three uh, connects the hand of God to the power of God. He says, God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran, Sarah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. And then he says, his brightness was like the light he had raised flashing uh, from his hand. He had raised flashing from his hand. And he said, and there his power was hidden. Let's look at that scripture uh, from, the, uh, from the King James, the original uh, King James. Uh, Habakkuk 3, 3 said, God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Sira, his glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. He says, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there, wa- and there was the hiding of his power meaning the hand of God is the custodian of the power of God. The power of God is hidden in the hand of God. In Exodus chapter 15, verse number 6 also emphasizes the same, that the hand of God releases power to people. When the hand of God rests upon you, his power is upon you. He says, your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemies in pieces. May that hand rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. May that hand establish you in the name of Jesus. May that hand Dash your enemy in pieces in the name of Jesus. May that hand be glorious in power upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And number three, the hand of God releases the favor of God. There is something called favor in the kingdom of God. There is that force of acceptance. There's that force of of, of likability. There's that force that comes upon you. And people feel compelled to do you good. People are compelled to do you good. People are compelled to be nice to you. People are compelled to favor you. People are compelled to assist you. There is, I mean, when that force is lacking in the life of a Christian, it is a very, very uh, stressful life. It's a very strenuous journey. It's not easy, but there is something called favor. And that favor is locked up in the hand of God. When the hand of God comes upon a man, it is hard, it is impossible for that man to be rejected. It's impossible for that woman to be rejected. You shall find favor this year in the name of Jesus. Let's look at Ezra chapter 7, verse number 6. We have already seen it. He said, this Ezra, there are many Ezra's, but this Ezra, it shall be said of you this year that this your name. This so-and-so. Why? Because there are many, but this one stands out. So it says, this Ezra came up from Babylon, and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord God that was upon him. This is favor. This is likability. This is compulsion to do you good. 
people shall be compelled to do you good this year in the name of Jesus. People shall be compelled to do you good in the mighty name of Jesus. Some people will not rest until they have done you good. Some people will not rest until they have blessed you. Why? Because of the favor of God upon your life. Because of the favor of God that is produced by the hand of God that is upon your life. In Ezra chapter 8 verse number 18, we also see, it says, Then by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mahli, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, namely Sherabiah, with his sons and brothers, 18 men. By the good hand of God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. You need people to accomplish destiny. You need people to accomplish vision. You need people to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish this year. And people answer to you according to favor. You may have everything working, but if people reject you, let me tell you, it is hard to fulfill destiny. Uh, because God works with people, and God works in your life and blesses you through people. So Jesus grew and increased in favor before God and before man. Before God and before man. Many of you know God loves you, and you know that very well. But the reason why we're not making progress is because men don't like us yet. It's because men don't like us yet, and you can't force yourself on people. The hand of God must produce favor. Let me tell you, there is that technology called favor. It is coming upon you in the name of Jesus by the good hand of God upon your life. When the hand of God comes upon a man, he, I've told you, he becomes likable. You, my daughters, you desire marriage. Let the good hand of God come upon you. <laughs> just like makeup, just like perfume, just like any other thing that you put upon yourself, cry out for the good hand of God upon you and see the favor of God that you will attract before men and before, I mean, before God and before men in Jesus' mighty name. In Nehemiah also chapter 2, verse number 18, Nehemiah 2, 18, he says, I told them of the good hand of God which was upon me and the king's words, and they said, let us arise and build. Let us arise and what? And build. Meaning that they answered, they favored Nehemiah. They accepted to help Nehemiah. They loved Nehemiah because of the good hand of God that was upon him that produced that kind of favor. That shall be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, how does the hand of God help to produce divine speed? Number four, the hand of God releases the resources of God. The hand of God releases the resources of God. Isaiah 45 verse number one says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him and to loose the armor of kings to open before him the double gates, the double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. Number two, I will go before you and I will make the crooked path straight. I will break in pieces the gates of, of bronze and cut in bars. I, I mean cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasure of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord who calls you by your name, I am the God of what? Of Israel, the hand of God releases the treasures of God. The hand of God releases the resources of God. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse number 6 also shows us that Nehemiah was given all the resources that he needed because the hand of God was upon him. He says, then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, how long will your journey be and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me and I set him a what? A time. Remember, every vision must have a time frame. There has to be a time to your vision. Furthermore, I said to the king, if it please the king, let letters be given me for the governors of the region beyond the river that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber, resources, 
You need resources for the vision that you have this year. You need money for the business, capital for the business you want to set up. You need people. You need money. You need resources, 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 provision that he might give me timber to make the beams of the gates of the citadel, which pertains to the temple for the city wall, for the house that I will occupy, his personal house. He's believing God for resources for his, his own personal house. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. The hand of God releases the resources of God. You have a vision, resources are stuck. You need the hand of God to unlock those resources and to usher you into your vision. Because when you have a vision and there are no resources, you find that you are stuck. Why? Because yes, you want to work, but the resources are lacking. There's something about the hand of God that it scatters scarcity. Scarcity disappears from you. Every vision gains acceleration with provision. Every vision gains acceleration when there is provision. When provision comes into every vision, there is always what acceleration. Many people with wonderful ideas, wonderful things that they want to accomplish, but they can't do why because, uh, yes, the things were revealed by God, but they need resources for those things to come to pass. Now, that is exactly what the hand of God does. When the hand of God comes upon you, resources are released uh, for you to accomplish that which you are called to accomplish in Jesus' mighty name. Number five and the last one is that the hand of God guarantees protection. The hand of God guarantees protection. The hand of God guarantees protection. Many of us, I mean, destiny sometimes is delayed because of the assaults of the enemy, because of the attacks of the wicked, because of the manipulation of the wicked one, because of opposition, because of attacks, because of things that the devil does to demotivate, derail, and actually destroy, if possible, those that are called of God. But there is something about the hand of God when it comes upon a visionary that it makes you literally untouchable. It makes you a touch not. Whoever touches you regrets. Whoever touches you has an evidence that they touched a touch not. Are you listening, somebody? Enough is enough of the devil messing with God's children and getting away with it. Enough. I mean, we have had enough of that. Now it's time for you to provoke the hand of God that guarantees protection. I remember listening to a message by a man of God uh, called uh, Bishop Benson Idahosa. And the message is called, If I Be a Man of God. And that message provoked something on the inside of me. And he said in his teaching that if you're not careful as a man of God, the devil can use you as a rag to mop the floor. But if you understand who you are, I mean, you understand who you are. When the devil tries to use his children to use you as a mop, then you have to put him in his place. You have to understand this for us. I mean, for me, I know this as a child. I mean, a child of God and as a servant of God, that the integrity of this office must be guarded, and it must be guarded jealously. And anyone that dares it must feel it. Why? Because this is what it is. Prove that you sent me. That is the prayer. Now, you need to understand these things also as a child of God. If I be a child of God, let fire fall. If I be a man of God, let fire fall. In other, there are certain things you must reject. There are certain things you must refuse. There are certain things you must oppose. There are certain things you must, not, you must not allow in your vicinity, in your surrounding, in your vision as a child of God. You have set your work. God is helping you. Is bringing this and bringing that and putting things together for you. And all of a sudden, someone is antagonizing and confusing and destroying. And I mean, you're putting a brick, they are removing it. You put it, they remove it. Now you need to understand this aspect of the hand of God. Psalms 89, verse number 20. He says, I have found my servant David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. He said, with whom my hand shall be established. Mark that uh, sentence. With whom my hand shall be established. My hand shall be established. He says, also my arm shall strengthen him. Also my arm shall strengthen him. Of course, you can't have an arm without a hand. He says, and then he says in verse 22, the enemy shall not outwit him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. 
Huh? Then he says, I will beat down his foes before his face and plague those who hate him. Are you listening, somebody? Let's go and look at it from the Amplified, uh, from verse 20. Psalms 89, from verse 10. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him, with whom my hand shall be established and ever abide. My arm also shall strengthen him. He says, the enemy shall not exact from him or do him violence or outwit him. Many of you, the enemy is doing, is doing, out, is doing you violence in your vision. <laughs> I saw, I, I can't forget, uh, something, uh, I saw a meme of someone calling and says, hello, uh, Angel Gabriel, I want you to tell Michael that these weapons are prospering. Now, you need to understand, <laughs> those whip, the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall not prosper. So it shall not be hard of you that you want to call heaven and say the weapons are prospering. They cannot. He says, the enemy shall not exact upon him violence I mean, uh, or do violence to him or outwit him, nor shall the wicked afflict and humble him. Are you listening? I will beat down his foes before his face and smite those who hate him. Let's look at it from the New Living Translation. We are talking about protection here. The hand of God guarantees protection. Have you been beaten left, right, and center by the devil in the year 2020? Now is your turn by provoking the hand of God upon you, not only in January, but for the rest of this year. He said, I found my servant David. I've anointed him with my holy oil. He says in verse 21, I will steady him with my hand. With my powerful arm, I will make him what? Strong. His enemies will not defeat him, nor will the wicked overpower him. He says, I'll beat down his adversaries before him and destroy those who hate him. Let's look at it lastly from the message version. The hand of God guarantees protection. I found David, my servant, poured holy oil upon his head. I will keep my hand steadily on him. Yes, I will stick with him through thick and thin. My God, through thick and thin. Because those who attack you sometimes attack you through thin. But God says he will stick with you through thick and what? And thin. And he says in verse, no enemy will get the best of him. No squandrel will do him in. Are you listening to somebody? Verse 23, he says, I will weed out all those who oppose him. And I will clean out all those who hate him. That is your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lastly, as I conclude, what qualifies us for the hand of God? Of course, you must be born again. You must be a child of God. There's no doubt about that. Don't even dare I call upon the hand of God as a sinner, except you're calling upon that hand for salvation. The Bible tells us, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall not be put to what? Shall not be put to shame, and they shall be saved in Jesus' mighty name. Qualifications for the hand of God after salvation. Number one, love for God. Your love for God. Acts chapter 13, verse 22 tells us that, and when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as a king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, whom, who will do all my will. Who will do all my will. This is uh, God speaking of David in uh, 1 Samuel, of course, chapter 13, verse number 14. Uh, he says, but now your kingdom shall not continue. For the Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So we see Saul being removed and David being anointed, and the hand of the Lord coming upon David simply because he positioned himself as a lover of God. You know that God loves you, but do you love God? Do you love God? It's one thing for God to love you. It's another thing to love God. But when you love God, you qualify for his hand to rest upon you. I have found a man after my own heart. And Psalms 89, verse 20, he says, I have found David my servant. So yes, you may see he is saying, I found David my servant. But you also, when you connect it with 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, I have found David a servant after my heart, a man after my heart, my love, a man that loves me. You want the hand of God upon your life? Fall in love with Jesus this year. Fall in love afresh with God this year. Fall in love with the mighty one 
this year. Acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come to you. Number two, a life of prayer and fasting. A life of prayer and fasting attracts the hand of God. Don't just stop at this fasting that ends today. Commit to monthly fasting. Commit to quarterly fasting. Commit to, I mean, fasting every now and then. And see the hand of God set up. The Bible says, with whom my hand shall be established. It's one thing for the hand of God to visit you. It's another thing for the hand of God to rest upon you. Jabez prayed and said, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers, for his mother called him Jabez because he bore him in pain. And he says, And Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you may bless me and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that your hand would be with me. How do you activate the hand of God upon your life? Prayer and fasting, and praying and fasting specifically for the hand of God. When you see the hand of God lacking in your life, when you see stagnation ruling, when you see stagnation becoming the order of the day, then you begin to call upon the hand of God. Father, let your hand rest afresh upon me. Let your hand rest afresh upon me. Let your hand rest afresh upon me. And let your hand cause speed in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Learn to pray and fast for the hand of God to rest afresh upon your life and begin to see continuous progress and supernatural speed in Jesus' mighty name. We know in 1 Kings 18.41, that I, I mean Elijah was a man of prayer. So we see in the life of Elijah that he provoked the hand of God because he was a man of prayer. We have already seen Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15 and 16. That man was a man of prayer. Verse 16 and 15, Nehemiah chapter 6 said, So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. A very, very big project finished in 52 days. But if you haven't seen Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, then you don't know his secret. But when you look at Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, then you know why a, a project that was so big could be finished in such a short time. And so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Nehemiah 6.15 so the work was finished in 52 days. I was praying and fasting before the God of heaven. So the work was finished in 52 days. You see that? A connection between prayer and fasting and divine speed that is also connected to the hand of God. And the third qualifier to the hand of God, accessing the hand of God, is kingdom service. Kingdom service. Psalms 89 Verse 20 says, I have found David my servant. That's why many people, I mean, like I said, uh, tend to miss it. That he says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. So before David became a king, he has to first register as a servant before God. Many people want to register as kings before they become, I mean, then they think, I mean, as the first thing they identify with. The, your first identity with God, after knowing yourself as a child of God, you must subscribe to servanthood. That's why we are called as kings and priests to God. I mean, kings to rule and reign, priests to serve. If you don't subscribe as a servant, you may never emerge as a king, and go forbid. You want to see the hand of God upon you. Enlist in the school of kingdom service. Enlist as a kingdom servant. You may be a lawyer, you may be a doctor, you may be a housewife, you may be a minister, whatever you are. And God has called you so, but you must subscribe to the school of service, of servanthood. You must enlist as a servant of God. You must be identified first as a servant for you to qualify for the hand of God. He doesn't say that my hand is upon David the king. No, he said my hand is upon David the servant. Therefore, will, he, will David be established as a king? You want to emerge as a king this year. You want to emerge great this year. 
Jesus said, he that will be great must be servant of all. Enlist in the king, I mean in the school of service. Enlist as a kingdom servant. Find your place in the service of God. Look for something that you can do this year for God, in the house of God. Consistently, if you want to see the hand of God resting upon your life. There are people that receive a visitation of the hand of God. But if you want the hand of God to be established upon you, this is what you must do. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand shall be established upon him. Verse 21. There is going to be an establishment when it comes to David. With whom my hand shall be established. With whom my hand shall be established. You want the hand of God to rest upon you and abide Enlist in the school of service. Enlist as a kingdom servant. Many of us have served and our service has grown cold because of challenges, because of COVID, because of all manner of things. It is time for you to renew your service before God. It's time for you to renew your covenant of service this early in the year and say, I must locate myself in the house of God. I must locate myself in the service of God. I must find my place in the service of God because I want the hand of God to rest upon my life. I want to encourage you today and to speak to you and I declare that this year you shall see the hand of God like never before in Jesus' name. I decree the hand of God establishes you in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not be found delayed, denied, stagnated this year in the name of Jesus. Every force of stagnation, every force of delay, every power of opposition is crushed before you in Jesus' name. Every enemy that tries to stand to oppose, to derail, to distract, and to, and to stop you, you shall run over them in the mighty name of Jesus. The glory of God, the hand of God, the hand of speed pushes you into your destiny speedily in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for being part of the service. I, want to leave, I never want to leave without giving a chance to give Jesus, I mean, lordship over your life, to make him Lord and Savior of your life. If you're not born again, pray this prayer with me. Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. I ask Jesus to come into my life. Jesus, make me a new creature. I am your own. I am your child. I am saved. I am born again in Jesus' mighty name. You pray that prayer. Call the numbers on the screen, 0773. 322-281-075-432-2281 and you shall be assisted accordingly in Jesus' mighty name. I also want to encourage you to be a covenant practitioner this year like never before through your giving. The numbers you give to us 0773 322-281-0754-322-281 773-322-281-754-322-281 one. You're writing a check, you write it to Amazing FA Church, and you call those numbers, and you shall be helped accordingly. I also want to remind you about what I told you at the very beginning, that we're preparing for you a brand new place, a brand new phase, by the help of God. A permanent place, a place where you will know you will be worshiping God, not in a hurry, knowing very well that this is our own, we are here to stay. And that, pl I mean, plans are underway in the coming weeks or week. We shall be unveiling to you the plans. We want you to prepare, I mean, as, as a child of God, as a kingdom practitioner, as a covenant person, yes, to give, to sacrifice, to engage with us because we know that God is with us. The good hand of God is upon us and this phase we are entering is a phase of establishment in Jesus' mighty name. The plan shall be coming your way. The admin team is preparing. You shall be receiving, of course, calls. We shall be casting the vision. We'll be showing you exactly what we are going to be doing, and you'll get a chance to reach even the place yourself and see uh, what we shall be doing in Jesus' mighty name as we prepare for the grand reopening in a brand new way and a brand new face in Jesus' mighty name. Stay on this page for details and for updates, and may the Lord Richard bless you in the name of Jesus. May this week Coming, be the best week of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for our nation, Uganda. Yes, we pray for justice. 
but we also pray for peace because God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of fear. God is the author of peace. God is the author of peace and stability. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree peace upon this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. We arrest all the forces that are calling for bloodshed of all kinds in Jesus' mighty name and we decree peace in the name of of Jesus. Not that we say, I mean, peace must come at the expense of freedom and, and human right abuse, but we are saying peace must reign in Jesus' mighty name. God, do your work, deal with the wicked, deal with the oppressors, and let this land have peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are a faithful God, you are a mighty God. Nothing is too difficult for you. When you solve a matter, you can solve it without casualties. You can solve it with minimal or no collateral damage in Jesus' mighty name. That is the God we serve, and that is what he can do in Jesus' mighty name. Now, we also want to encourage you as you step out there in the course of the week, stay away from trouble. God, I mean, <laughs> we want to see you. I mean, in the, in the new phase this year, I want to see you uh, experiencing and growing and expanding and doing a very powerful things in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. I love you so much. See you uh, on Wednesday uh, or, and on, on Sunday in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.